All right, let's close up shop with this. So it's, um, I think it's important. It's kind of the way I break down um, startups and, and values for everybody going into the season, which is I do a lot of mocks and stuff like that to start getting my bearings on um, values of guys. And that's how I decide. I don't ever, I don't really hate anybody. I hate, values on guys and i it's a risk reward thing and i mean i hate um, Keyshawn vaughn but whatever <laughs> um but i always look at it as a beginning a middle and the end and you know you got your first part of the draft you got your middle part of the draft and you got your end and as i go through the off season i'm always trying to figure out all right these are my end of the tier end of the draft guys and these are these block of guys that these are the guys i always end up with here's my middle of the road guys Here's the block of the guys that I'm always looking for and always trying to get. And then here's my higher end guys. And it all changes a little bit depending on the risks I took in the top half of the draft, you know, or the middle of the draft. Did I take a bunch of risky guys that I take, you know, some, some safe guys. I take some old guys that I take some young guys and it all kind of changes and fluctuates as you go through. Um, so I wanted to close up with just some cheaper guys as you were coming off the end of the season, maybe some guys that you guys think, none of us have done any mock drafts or anything, so we don't know exactly who's there, but going off some ADP or guys off your head that you think might be a little, and again, this will change. And it's something that I want to keep with throughout the off season and keep talking about, but like as no narratives have really been created on guys and values. So some of these guys will probably say a million times, some guys we might not mention again from this uh, specific little segment here. And there'll be guys added to the list because the narratives got created and, pushed them down further for whatever reason um so you guys got anybody off the rip that you like a couple of cheaper guys that you'd be targeting at the end of drafts or maybe just trying to put on the end of a, of a deep dynasty roster so we're talking like deep like cheap cheap money well, whatever you got like maybe like anywhere from the hundredth adp down to 250 you know it's even hundredth adp we're talking what around 10 12 something like that so it's not it's not cheap money, but it's like it's affordable money, I yeah, guess. I, I, affordable yeah. money. Uh, hey, any, anywhere from there, like off the rip, I like I liked what Cephas was doing at the end of the year. Well, that's uh, cheap money. That's cheap. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like one eighty three right now. Like one eighty. I'm. I was gonna say like Michael Michael Gallup. He's one hundred six ADP. That's not cheap money, and it might fall too going into the off season, but. Um, yeah, so you I, might I, have to I like wait what another I saw year from, from Cephas's big ass at the end of but the year. He was looking kind of spry. He looks there. like a tight end, bro. He does. I, I then he's got that 87 or whatever number he's wearing. It just got a tight end number looking big as fuck. Um, so I liked what Cephas did. Uh, Gus Edwards, uh, he, he's out of contract. I think he's released the fucking bus, Gus, and let him get a chance somewhere to be the guy or re sign him for another year or two. I think he's a fun stab. Uh, Miles Boykin flashed a couple of times and you could be having another like if they want to use him properly like he could kind of be like a waller in your lineup that that yeah is, that dude is, looks big and fast and strong Boykin is really fast and he's really big and I I dumped him off the end of some you know medium-sized rosters in the middle of this season I scooped him I, up I at hate, one of those I, leagues I hate that he 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 came well I don't hate I love that he came out and was catching some some deeper uh TDs, but um, let's see. Ahmed, we Ahmed, we talked about him a little bit. These are all in the one eighties. Um, Logan Thomas, we talked about him. Um, Marlon Max, another. He's at two hundred four in ADP right now. Two hundred four left for dead. What? Where'd you, where's Free Logan agent. Thomas? Logan Thomas is one fifty nine. That's non premium. I'm a, I assume. Yeah. Um, but that's I think, and that I think that'll come up a little bit as narrative sure. gets created. Um, I, but I think like people, Logan Thomas. You, got, you, you have to circle back and figure out if they get when the guy's not on your team, who is scoring points. Yeah, and obviously Logan. I mean, the Redskins' ability to as from guys that were throwing the ball. Sure. Their quarterback situation was ridiculous at times this year. Um, but it looked like when as soon as Alex Smith got in there, he was like, Hey, watch, this is how you play NFL quarterback. You throw it to this huge man over here who's kind of close enough to you that you can complete it to him. And then, and so, by the way, played a little quarterback, so it probably sees the field a little different than a lot of guys out there. And it's and it looked and it clicked, and all of a sudden, he Logan Thomas was doing work. Yeah, that's, I think that's a good target. Uh, Ebron super cheap st seems still one seventy three, and if you didn't have Ebron, you don't know. But he, I mean, if in premium, he put up strong numbers every week or most weeks anyway. 
Um, Nelson Aguilar at 175. He's a free agent. Yeah. Leave the wow, yeah. Had, had a nice, 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 had a nice year. A nice, uh, nice little year there. Absolutely. I mean, I wish I had a benched Marvin Jones to play Nelson Aguilar in week 16, but I didn't. An idiot. Uh, Marvin Jones is another guy. He's he's also a free agent. He's at 144. He's 31 years old or will be. Uh, Still be, looks be, like he's got game, though. Absolutely. Tons of it. Just so, when it shows up, he can get on a hot streak, man. He can as, be a heater. As soon as Big Coast said he was through with Marvin Jones selling for a third, he just took off. <laughs> For like the rest of the season, this is like one of the only years he played all sixteen games. Oh, so great! I picked him up in one of my FFPC leaves off the waiver wire. Like the week after, I said I was breaking up with him for cheap, and uh, <laughs> because I was like, even though I was breaking up with him, like That's he's not going to be yeah. on the waiver wire, Mm-mm. not in my league, and he torched to end the season he did, he did suck in week 16 but that's yeah. it, it's not his fault out. yeah Matt Matt Stafford went, went out in the first fucking series first what a series. terrible week six and then he goes out week 17 and just murders the whole league mm-hmm. him and tyler lockett oh if my you, gosh if you could tell me right now that marvin jones was going to be playing with matt stafford next year i'd, I'd make sure he was on all the all my new teams too. I mean, it will be because he's going to be picked in the 150s. So I'm taking Marvin Jones just because. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I mean, if we're going to talk about a 30 year old receiver, we've already scrolled up. Cole Beasley's down there at 160. Cole? Oh, I mean, everybody knows we're already okay, we're smitten okay. with Cole. We're smitten. King Cole, smitten. Getting to the bread like food trucks, making moves <laughs> like food trucks. Getting to the bread, it's chewed up. There we go. Throw a couple more guys out there. Herndon, 267. We talked about the Jets and their trajectory. Strong. Once Case is out of there. He, he finished the season a little strong. Caught a couple touchdowns there at the end. Definitely. Uh, Jeff Wilson, Jr., 225 right now. Um, looks When he's out there, he looks good. I mean, I mean, know it's the Niners, and I'd love to Catching see them balls. get like, a ridiculous running back there. But uh, Dan Arnold, just so if you got a super deep – uh, team there seems like he was kind of coming on and, and Kyler and him were kind of developing a little bit of chemistry he's basically a fucking wide receiver out there which I think um, a couple of these guys that I've named already are tight ends Irv Smith's on here 122 uh, Ertz is on here 123 like oh Ertz gotta get some Ertz yeah I mean 122 position right now are, are uh, they're some of my favorite players to kind of stash on and and, and stab on I, I think uh they're disregarded a lot in drafts usually the pretty cheap stab and stash um, yeah and and the tight end position and i think the way that they're used is on the up right now i think it's becoming one of the best mismatches on the field for the smart teams that know how to use it and manage it like it doesn't no even need to necessarily be a tight end he just needs to be that bigger body dude who's athletic and we've seen it a couple times in the league here and a couple other guys are going to catch on to this and find the right guys. Um, and I, I, like I said, I just think it's one of the better mismatches that goes on on the field right now. Like you can't guard Darren Waller. You can't guard Kelsey. Obviously the chiefs are a whole different bear. Um, but I think, I think it's kind of coming, which I like those kind of hyper. Like I love Kyle Pitts. I'm going to do everything I can to get him on so many teams this year. He's just a receiver playing the tight end position coming out of Florida there. Florida. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, Dawson Knox is on there. They're just an offense that has a lot of firepower moving forward. He's a pretty athletic dude. Um, yeah, Irv Smith. I, I would. He he he's when he got fed a couple times this season, he looked really strong. Ertz is super cheap, one twenty three. Um, I'd stash uh, Drew Sample. He was getting peppered Sample. for periods with with Joe Burrow. He was a high pick. We talked about Keyshawn Vaughn, 155. I think he's going to get some burn next year. I think he'll get in the tree of trust. I th- and it was never that he wasn't a good player. It's just that he was a young or older young player and didn't have an offseason, and Tommy and them are going to – He's a trash sandwich. And um, I like I like the idea of stabbing on Vaughn. Um, who else? Uh, we talked a little bit about David Johnson, 132. I'd be buying up some David Johnson. Obviously, if you're not like a team that's putting together uh, – a mediocre roster that's not really in shape to win but like if i'm building the team the first year in the draft nine times out of ten i'm not doing the productive struggle and i'm going to win and i think david johnson could be a nice little key stuck in texas and text with the texans for one more year dude if you get david johnson in the 11th round bo you yeah. got to 
got to. And I, I, we, I was talking to Jay Wayne beforehand, and it was just like, were all these running backs this year that were all the Connors, Levs, David Johnsons, uh, four, Melvin five, Gordon, six, all those guys. guys that were four, five, six rounds are going to drop down to the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh round kind of guys, and not like it's going to be a fun year to be able to kind of build a back end of the roster with some of these older running backs that are going to have good stretches and and good seasons. Right, because yeah, Gordon could easily have a good year. Um, yeah, and you, Carson, you, he's a free agent. What's going to happen with him? James Connors a free agent. Benny Snell. Benny, I'll, I'd be taking a little stab on Anthony McFarlane if we're talking cheap cheap cuts. That guy's flashed a little bit. He didn't do. Yeah, he's much. probably free, and he's probably in the two hundreds. No, nah, he's he's not. He's in like one. Nope. Uh, I had him down here. One uh, interessante. Still taking my guy DeVernay at 177. I know he's on the Ravens, but I just on a deeper bench, I'm just going to draft the talent guys and stash them away and just leave them there for a while. I think there's a lot of talent one, there. Was it 178? Sorry, Biko, I think I cut you off. What were you, oh, I was what just were saying, you trying to say? Buying those running backs in the 10th and 11th round, you ain't paying much for them. Mm-mm. Uh, yeah, Gallman, be- Gallman's at like 193 right now. He's a free agent. He's shown that if you give him the rock, he could be – Semi competent, you know. Lane train, baby. Didn't, didn't look absolutely awful. And if you're going to tell me in the on my 200th pick, I could take a guy that that uh, like that that I've seen play decent at the position, I, I'm not opposed. Can I get my two star review back for Wayne Gallman already? <laughs> yeah, we got a two star review on the Wayne Gallman rookie draft because we took him in like the end of the second round or third yeah. round or something. And that was our Wayne first Gallman two star review. Ago. We were mad. I was heated. Robbie right. Anderson checks in at 85. Interesting. So oh, five, Rob, twelve is sixty. Robbie's a good buy. Six, he never 12, gets any respect. Um, I think Preston Williams is a, seven, a more expensive kind of cheaper dude. Pre- Paris Campbell. You know, those are all in the low one hundreds. Those are guys that I'd be trying to get a piece of. Curtis Samuel. If someone's sleeping on him, I'd be down to pay some for for Curtis Samuel. I think him approximately. And, sorry, KJ. Him and Paris. Let me get some. Oh yeah. That. What you got, Rico? Approximately the eighth, the first pick in the eighth round, approximately is Robbie Anderson. Sign me up. Told y'all boys last year I scooped him up everywhere for a third. Yeah, BMI though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, we'll dig a little deeper into this coming up. What, what about uh, Cortland Sutton? You think he'll be a little cheaper next year coming off the injury? And people love uh, Judy. They also hate the Broncos. Drew Locke sucks. Their mm-hmm. coaching staffs probably. Do they still got Vic Vangio? He he's still yeah, on no. the job. Vangio's coming back. Always giving up power. It seems like he's trying to find somebody else to run the ship. Yeah, Sutton dropped down to sixty-two on average. If you're not familiar with ADP on uh, DLF, um, yeah, I mean, this is, it comes down to any time a thing player every year comes off of an injury, they're cheaper the next year. Pretty much. So. Mixon, Cortland Sutton, go get you some of those guys. All right, fellas. Well, had a good time talking with you. Been a bit a minute. Had a good time. We're uh, we got Angelo fan, fantasy Angelo fantasy FF in the works there. Maybe the end of January, looking like. So he's going to come on and probably kick off our uh, prospect talk. Rookie talk. Rookie talk. Rookie talk. Rookie talk. Rookie talk. Like I said, we'll be doing some mocks here uh, relatively soon and and more kind of breaking down top tier guys that we like, medium tier guys and end of tier guys as as the season goes on and about to start looking at some tape for some guys. So we'll see you next time. Did you guys enjoy today? Was it was it, was it okay? It's been a while. It's been a while. I was, I was good. I was looking forward to it. I was yeah needing this. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, anytime we get on the mics, even though 2021 sucks, still fun to get on the mics. Shout out to Dr. Dre. Yeah. Well, See you later. Look at what's, what's wrong with Dr. Dre. Is everything okay? Brain aneurysm. Oh, shit. Yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah, so look at, we brought it back around. We started with Dre. We didn't. That's what you call a tease. We, we made you get all the way through to, fi- to figure out what happened to Dr. Dre. What causes brain aneurysm? I don't know if anybody money? Knows. He's in the middle of a divorce, so I guess that could- <laughs> oh, he does have too much money for a divorce. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Damn.
What a stud that guy is. said he has a prenup, but she, she said that he ripped the prenup up a long time ago. And he's like, nah, I didn't rip the prenup up. <laughs> that was a different piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he sold, he sold, uh, he sold the apple. The beats. So. Yeah. All right, boys. I'm out. I'll see y'all next time. Peace. Peace.